Well, last year, darkness consumed Carl Lewis as he fell from the world's top 10 rankings in the 100 for the first time in 16 years. Today, he contemplates a return to glory. And he said his was an impossible task to compete against the fastest in the world with his best years behind him. We'll see Carl Lewis next in his 100 semifinal heat. A look at the Olympic cauldron here at the stadium in Atlanta. It will hold the Olympic flame during the opening ceremonies July 19th. And of course, there's a man that's seen a lot of Olympic flames in his time. In fact, when you think of Olympic track, chances are the image of Carl Lewis comes to mind. Through his eight Olympic gold medals, his many records, his memorable triumphs, his place among the sports greats is assured. Why then, at nearly 35 years of age, would he risk tarnishing the legend? The gain is far greater. You see, I understand after being in this game for 16 years, 17 years, that there are only a few people that are willing to take a lot of risk. There are only a few people that are going to go out and not be afraid of what people think about them or try something different or try to stir it up a little bit. And I'm one of those people. For nearly two decades, track stadiums around the world have become Carl's own personal theaters. Should expectations in the twilight of his career be so high as he makes one final push? Even if I don't compete well in the trials or the games, people will remember those moments. They'll remember the moments where I was there. And they'll remember the moments of coming back and showing what I can do again. That's the memory. And I don't even think the medals are important. I think just the fact that I was able to come back and do it again has inspired people. And that's what I'll remember no matter what happens. Carl's performance in the first two rounds, something less than dominant, so the issue's still in doubt here. Dennis Mitchell is another man, one of the favorites to make the U.S. Olympic team. He's been there before. First heat of the men's semifinals. Here are the lanes. Lane one is Tim Harden, just finished his last year at Kentucky, NCAA champion last year, runner-up in 96. In lane two, Terrence Bowen, former All-American at Fresno State. Carl Lewis will be in lane three. A new diet and training regimen. Some weightlifting plus a confident and focused attitude have gotten him this far. Now it's up to those nearly 35-year-old legs. And right next door, lane four, is Dennis Mitchell in his green machine outfit. The only American to make the last five championship teams. Bronze medalist in Barcelona. In lane five, Jeff Williams. Here's a sleeper, 30-year-old journeyman who looked good in the first two rounds here in Atlanta. In lane six, Vincent Henderson from College Track Power, Arkansas. In lane seven is Anthony Jones, the 94 Big Ten champ while at Illinois. And in lane eight is Jeff Lanes, two-time All-American during his days at Southern Cal. Well, Tom, the top four will make it to the final. And a real contrast in philosophies about running semifinals. The man on the right, Carl Lewis, wants to look good in the semifinals. It's important for his confidence in the final to run a good semi. Then it's Mitchell. The Green Machine says he just wants to make it to the final. He doesn't care how he performs in the semifinal. Mitchell sporting a, an eyebrow ring. It's not Dennis Rodman, but it's a start. In fact, sort of a body-piercing training wheels for Dennis. Well, he said he did it to have a younger, hipper look, but he says it scares his little daughter. <laughs> Carl Lewis, lane three. Dennis Mitchell, lane four. got away well on the inside here's Dennis Mitchell Carl Lewis got away slowly Harden in front here comes Dennis Mitchell and Carl Lewis with a late kick to the finish Mitchell Harden and Lewis I believe it looks like Williams got up for the fourth qualifying spot 998 with only a slight following win and the green machine is on fire Lewis a little bit sluggish out of the blocks but as you pointed out he really came on towards the end Dennis Mitchell and Carl Lewis had a memorable battle on the first race run on this Olympic track, the first hundred, with Mitchell nipping Carl Lewis then. Same sort of race pattern as happened here. There's the man in green 
dominating the race, but watch Carl Lewis come up towards the end. The classic finish for Carl Lewis. Let's go to Chris Collinsworth. He's with Carl Lewis. All right, Carl, a little shaky out of the blocks there, but you came on strong at the end. Yeah, I got a little cramp out of the blocks, but I felt good yeah, running, so all I have to do is just run, relax, run that kind of race, and I'll be fine. You have one more great race in you. I feel I do. I mean, the only thing I'm going to do is go out and run the best I can. I've done everything I've wanted to do up to now. I'm in a final. Anyone there has a shot, and I'm just going to take mine. Good luck. Thanks. Tom. Carl Lewis is sprinting toward the 100-meter final. Mitchell and Harden finished in front of him, but Carl will be there later. Williams also made the final in the men's 100. Next, John Drummond, who will do almost anything to attract your attention. They're trying not to look, but you can tell that they're watching you. So, I mean, any way that your attention is focused on me, I got you. It's kind of like the Dennis Rodman thing. You know, he gets all in your head. We approach the second semifinal in the men's 100 meters, featuring John Drummond. Looked good in the first two rounds, in fact, including a personal best 9.99. And there's Leroy Burrell, the current world record holder in the 100. He's battled injuries the last two years, but if he's right, he could be on the U.S. team. I think my fastest is good enough for the team. I don't think there are three people who can beat me if I run my fastest in the world, not, no, not only in the U.S. With all the troubles that Burrell has faced injury-wise, Tom, he says it would be a, one of the greatest comebacks in track and field history for him to make this team. He's got to get to the final to have that chance. And Mike Marsh, under underappreciated sprinter, you know, he has a long history with the Olympics. At the 84 games, he was a parking lot attendant. <laughs> Let's take a look at the lane assignments in the second semifinal. Lane one is Henry Neal, known more for his indoor prowess. Signed a wide receiver contract with the Dolphins. In lane two is Alvis Quitted. He'll be a junior at North Carolina State and is the Atlantic Coast Conference 100 and 200 champion. In lane three is Leroy Burrell, world record holder. Battle injury since he set that mark in 94 was fifth in Barcelona. In lane four, John Drummond, the clown prince, known for his showboating antics, is a gospel singer raised in Philadelphia. In lane five, Mike Marsh, the 92 Olympic 200 meter gold medalist, but no slouch at 100 either, last year's U.S. champion. In lane six, Brian Lewis, 21 year old from Norfolk State. In lane seven, Ken Brokenburg, 10.15 in both his heats yesterday. And in lane eight, Tim Montgomery, also from Norfolk State, and before that, U.S. Junior College champion. Right there, you see the big three in this semifinal. The man in the middle, John Drummond, says the secret to success uh, he should keep from the others. He says that if they put Chips Ahoy at the finish line, he'd set a world record trying to get there to eat them. But this is important business. We talked about it in the first semifinal. Who's going to win this semi? In the last four Olympic trials, both the semifinal winners went on to finish in the top three in the final, meaning they had a spot in the Olympic 100 meters. John Drummond told us he's guaranteed world's fastest start. The start has been excellent. Burrell on the right has had a slower start. That's been part of his inconsistent running since coming back from injury. Drummond did get away well. John Drummond, then Leroy Burrell, Mike Marsh trails by a step, Henry Neal down on the inside. Coming for the finish, and it will be John Drummond. Marsh closes for second. Burrell was there, and I think maybe Neal, the final qualifier. And it looks like a personal best for John Drummond in the semifinal. Hard to contain his excitement about that one, and it was against a slight win. But the win turns around for the final. Could be some very fast times. Well, if John Drummond can uh, duplicate that performance in the finals, in his words, there'll be some partying tonight. He invited us along for the party. You see him right in the middle, so well contained with his running, no wasted motion. Leroy Burrell on the right did not have a bad start. That's why he remained in it. Fastest finisher of all, the man on the left, Michael Marsh, who really came on strong. And that time official, 9.98, personal best for John Drummond. 
watch Marsh finish well, but the good thing about Drummond is he's been able to maintain his speed better than earlier in the season. Is that on? Talk to him in there. Is that working? Talk to him. Hey, Mom. I'm still running. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Well, John Drummond promised he'd be in the final, and he is. Another personal best, 9.98, with Marsh, Burrell, and Montgomery also qualifying for the final. Carl Lewis is headed to the men's 100-meter final, and look at this lineup. One of the best fields ever assembled for a men's 100-meter final. <laughs> 